Hi everyone, so today it's time for part two of Jeannie B. Jones as a peep in her pocket. Chapter three, pictures. The next morning, mother called me for breakfast. Good morning, said mother. Good morning, said daddy. Good morning, I said. Roosters can peck your head into a nub. Daddy put down his coffee cup. Excuse me? I pointed to my head. A nub, I explained. A, a nub is a teeny little knob head. Roosters can peck your head into one. Mother looked strange at me. What in the world is this about? I did a big breath at her. Because how can I even be clearer on this subject? A nub, a nub. A roundish, ballish head, knob. And do not tell me that roosters do not peck you on account of we had pet day at my school and Meanie Jim bought a rooster to room nine and that boy is a rooster expert. I looked at her. Plus also you said Uncle Billy's rooster was mean too. Right, mother? Remember that? Mother looked frustrated at me. Then she put her head on the table. And she didn't come up for a real long time. Finally, she peeked her eyes at Daddy. Now what? She asked kind of quiet. Maybe it'll blow over, said Daddy. I shook my head. No, it will not blow over, I said. I told them. Because roosters do not listen to reason. And so there's nothing we can do about this pecking situation. Daddy rubbed his eyes. Could we please just change the subject, he said. Yet yeah, only we're not talking about, about, sorry. Yeah, only not talking about a nub will not make it go away, I said. And so, that's enough, said Daddy, very growly. I quit, stopped talking then. But even we, after we had changed the subject, nubs kept staying on my mind. That day at school, Mrs. told us to draw a picture about one of our trip to the farm. She said to make a colorful picture of what we wanted to see there. I drawed and drawed, plus also I colored and colored. When all of us got done with our pictures, we sat in our chairs in a big circle and we told each other what we drew. My bestest friend named Lucille was first. She drawed a picture of, pink, of a pink flamingo. Flamingos are my favorite animals, she said. That's because pink is my favorite color and flamingos are pink. And I have a pink dress that will match them perfectly, so that is the dress I'll be wearing to on the field trip. She wrinkled her nose real cute. Pink brings out the natural blush of my complexion, she told Mrs. Have you ever noticed my satiny smooth skin? Mrs. looked and looked at that girl. You're a fascinating child, Lucille. But I'm afraid there aren't any flamingos on a dairy farm, she said. Lucille looks so, where are they then, she asked. Well, flamingos can be found a lot of places, said Mrs. South America, for example. Lucille shrugged her shoulders. So fine, we'll just go there instead. Mrs. said for Lucille to please sit down. Just then, Polly Allen Puffer springed out of his chair. Look, teacher, I drew a catfish, she said. See his whiskers? My brother said catfish whiskers are so sharp they can slice your finger to the bone. Mrs. made a sick face. Yes, well, thank you for sharing that, Polly Allen, but we're not going fishing. We're going to a farm, remember? Polly Allen Puffer looked upset. Yes, but my brother said that there are lots of catfish farms around here, and so that's the kind of farm I think we should... No, Polly. No, said Mrs. We're just going to a regular plain old farm with regular plain old farm animals. Polly Allen Puffer did a mad breath. <sighs> he said the word, big whoop. After that, Polly Allen Puffer had to stand in the hall. Mrs. did some deep breathing. Please, children, please. Did anyone in room nine draw a picture of a regular farm animal? Anyone at all? That's all I'm looking for here. Just a regular old farm animal. I did, I did, Mrs. I yelled real excited. I drew a picture of a rooster under a tree. Hopefully you can see. Oh, 
Oh, Junie B, thank you. That's perfect, she said. I holded it up so she could see it. See it, Mrs. See how pretty it is? Mrs. looked at my picture. Oh, yes. That's a very nice tree, Junie B, she said. But why is it lying on its side? It crashed over in a rainstorm, I said. Oh, said Mrs. Oh, dear. She looked even closer. But I'm afraid I don't see the rooster, honey. I pointed. I said, see his foot under the branches? He did not get out in time, apparently. Mrs. O covered her mouth with a hand. Just then a girl named Charlotte hollered, I hate that picture. It is a terrible picture. I crossed my arms at that girl. You would not say that if your head was a nub, sister, I said. Meanie Jim laughed real loud. Then Mrs. said for all of us to take our chairs back to our tables, and we did not show any more farm pictures. Oh, Junie B, so she's really scared of that rooster, huh? And she made a tree in her picture fall on top of the rooster to smash it. Junie. Chapter 4. cockle doodly doo On Saturday, Mother came to my room. She said we were going shopping for clothes for the farm trip. I looked up from my coloring book. No, thank you, I said. On account of I'm getting a fever that day, so I won't actually be going to the farm. Mother laughed. Don't be silly, she said. Then she picked me up and she carried me out to the car. Yeah, only here's the problem. You are not respecting my wishes, I said. Mother laughed some more. I promise this will be fun. I did a huffy breath. Whatever, I said. Whatever is the grown-up word for that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. And guess what? I was right. Shopping was not fun at all because Mother kept on making me try on clothes that I didn't even want. First, she made me try on a shirt with checkery squares. Then she made me try on overalls with great big giant pockets. Plus, she tied a bandana around my neck and she put a straw hat on my head. I looked at the mirror and myself. What do you know? I'm a cornball, I said. Only too bad for me because Mother said I looked cute as a button and she bought those clothes anyway. Plus also she bought me a throwaway camera at the drugstore. And after we got home, I started to color again. Here's a picture of Junie B in her farm clothes. Let's see. Okay, she looks like a cornball. Poor Junie B. Mother hanged it up my new clothes. Do you want me to show you how to use the camera for your trip now? She asked. No, thank you, I said, on account of I am getting a fever that day, so I won't actually be going to the farm. After that, Mother did a big sigh, and she closed my door, and she let me color in peace. I got tricked. Because on the day of the trip, I told Mother I had a fever, but that woman did not even take my word for it. Instead, she took my temperature. And so what kind of trust is that, I ask you? No fever, she said. Then Mother dressed me on my farm clothes and she drove me right to my school. We pulled into the parking lot. Oh no, I said. Oh no, oh no. Because the bus was right there for the field trip already. It was parked right at the curb. Believe me, Junie B, said Mother. You're going to have a great day. Then she got me out of the car and she pulled me to my room, pulled me to my teacher. Good morning, Junie B, said Mrs. Don't you look cute today? I felt my forehead. I feel ill, I said. Mrs. smiled. I love your straw hat. My head is a flaming fireball, I said. Mrs. bended down next to me. And that bandana is absolutely darling. I am burning to a crinkle, I told her. Crisp said mother. Whatever, I said. After that, mother lifted me up onto the bus and she handed me my backpack with my lunch and camera. She waved goodbye to me. I did not wave back because my hand did not feel very friendly. Just then, my bestest friend named Grace came running to get me. Lucy, Junie B, Junie B, Lucille and I saved you a seat. Then she grabbed my arm and she took me way in the back. I sat down next to Lucille. No, said that Grace. That's my seat, Junie B. She quick pulled me up. So where am I supposed to sit then, I asked. Lucille pointed across the aisle. 
Right there, silly, she said. You sit right directly across from Grace and me. And so it is almost like we're sitting together, except you will be separate. I sat down. But there's nobody to talk to over here, I told her. Just then that meanie Jim jumped up from the seat behind me. Me! You can talk to me, he said, very laughing. And he leaned into my ear and he hollered. right into my eardrum. Too bad you're afraid of roosters, he said. Rooster, roosters can tell if you're afraid, Junie B. Ask anybody. Roosters always peck the scaredy heads first. No, they do not, Jim, I said back. You are just making that up, probably. And anyhow, if roosters pecked people's heads off, all farmers would have nub heads. Only they don't. So there. Ha ha. Jim raised up one eyebrow. Are you sure all farmers don't have nub heads? He asked, kind of spooky. Hmm? Are you? He did a grin. Why do you think farmers wear hats? Jim leaned closer. To cover up their nubs. That's why, he whispered. After that, he lifted up my hat and he patted my head and he cuckled, cockle doodly dude all over again. So do you think Junie's going to be scared again? Probably, huh? All right, we'll see you next time for part three.